golden fingertips against the glass, she's there outside my window. What'll it be today, she says, as she lets herself in. The usual, I say, as always. Supine in my bed, the fan blades hum their way above me around the ceiling. Next to the bed, she's getting her excavation equipment ready. She hoists pickaxe and a golden sack that always comes back empty. She climbs up onto the bed and clambers atop my abdomen. And with one hand on each side of the gaping exposed opening to my viscera, begins lowering herself down the dark hole into my solar plexus. The wings on her sandals scrape the edges of my exposed flesh and small feathers snag and are left behind, marking her descent. She snaps her gold-rimmed goggles down over her eyes and catches my gaze. She says, let's see what I come up with today. Not expecting much though. She shrugs and then slides down the hole out of view. Good luck, I snap. I'm weary of this old routine. After just a few moments, I can feel her moving the contents around, shoving, poking, searching, assessing. I impatiently crane my neck. Well, how is it going down there today? I peer over the edge of my rib cage, trying to catch a glimpse into the dark depths of my own insides. It's like last week she huffs between breaths. There's just not much in here, you know. I feel her heave a pile off to one side. Well, what was that? I called down. She said, Oh, that was the free prep school, she shouted. We definitely can't use any of that. I lay my head back down on the pillow and I watch the fan in its rotation round the ceiling. Then I hear her bump against another pile. Well, what about there? I shout down. Humph, she says, two attentive parents. What do you expect me to do with this? So I shout down, do you mind digging a little deeper today? All right, let me see, she says. I see over here, what's this? I see piano lessons, no, that won't work. Oh wait, what about over here? Never mind, four year college. She stomps her way back to the opening. She begins to claw her way up towards the surface. She leans her elbows on the flap of skin just below my rib cage and pushes the goggles back into her hair. Golden sweat beads off her temples and runs down her cheekbones in rivulets, mixing with flecks of my blood on the way down. We can't keep up like this. I pinch the bridge of my nose between thumb and index. I look back up at the ceiling. What about the one boss who was mean? We'll have to do better than that. Okay, okay, wait, wait. Or the boy who dumped me. She's like, you're not getting it. You just don't get it, do you? She heaves herself out of my abdomen with her elbows. She steps one sandaled foot and then the other down onto the white bed sheets. She leaves mustardy footprints across the floor. I pride myself on meeting you halfway, but can you see how you're not making this easy? But I want to write. 
I always have. But I want to write. I always have, she mimics. She fake rubs her eyes, conjuring fake tears. We're running out of time, she says. Can you go have an affair? Or I don't know, can you back up over your neighbor's dog with the car? I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel here. The window closes behind her. There's no book, no essay. No blog, no poem. There's no interview. There's no audience. There's no writer to be seen anywhere for that matter either. Just a dark, empty hole revealing my uninteresting insides, an abysmal container of my non experiences. My eyes move from the fan, then to the hole, then to the feathers in my flesh, to my blood, to her sweat, to the golden smear of a hand on the window. I tumble down from the bed, I wriggle and writhe my way through her footprints on the floor. I arrive at my notebook at last. I sit down. I write.